Hello everybody, it's Tetsu Kiripai here. Today is the first video of our channel and it's about a pretty interesting topic that is networking technology. We are here to provide you true knowledge and information in a digital manner. So if you like this content, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. So without wasting much time, let's start today's content. So today we are going to cover networking technology series and this series today we are first going to learn about introduction to networking in data communication. This is a very important topic so let's start. Let's get a pretty basic overview concept of the topic. Actually information in communication technology is increasingly at the core of strategies aimed at securing the global goals of sustainable development and stimulating economic growth around the world. Among other, these technologies are shaping the way of social interaction that takes place and public services are delivered in some fundamental ways. Actually, in my view, it is not the processing power of computers, but the processing power of communication or the power of communication among computers that has revolutionized the information age. So, actually, we have talked about communication. So, actually, what communication is? Actually, communication is the act of conveying meanings from one entity or group to another through the use of mutually understood signs, symbols, or semiotic rules. The fundamental purpose of communication is the exchange of data between two parties. Actually, there are components of communication. Actually, while talking, we have one sender who gives some information and there will be one receiver who will receive some information. Actually, there will be language of transmission and other there will be medium that used, like either we are speaking or verbally, uh, sorry, or visually uh, showing something to them or actually using hand symbols or symbols or signs like that. So, this is mediums used. The next now we have to have to learn is actually what is the telecommunication. So the marriage of computing and data communication technologies. Actually, data communication technologies means the method by which the data is transferred from one location to another location, which is one of the most exciting developments in today's information age. So telecommunication actually is the transmission of information by various types of technologies over wired, radio, or optical or other electromagnetic system. So now let's move on to learn about some of the components of telecommunication. So what are the components of telecommunication? Components of telecommunication are similar to components of communication, but it is actually more digital. So we can see here, visually I have shown you one sender com computer and another will be a receiver computer. It must not be actually a computer, it can be any digital uh, equipment, okay? So sender will send the information, receiver will receive the information, medium will be the path through which the information travels, and protocol will be the set of rules which must be followed during the transaction. So these are the components of telecommunication. I just told you some brief introduction. So now let's head into data communication modes. So I have talked to you about medium. So now let's learn something about the modes of data communication. Data communication, I've already told you, is the process of transferring data and information between computers and other electronic devices. And it is also called transmission mode. And directional modes. The transmission is characterized by actually uh, the types are characterized on the basis of the direction of exchange or the transmission mode or the number of bits sent simultaneously or the synchronization between transmitter and receiver. So we are going to learn about uh, the categorization of data communication mode on the basis of direction of exchange. So actually now let's get started with direction of data transmission. So there are two types of data transmission on the basis of direction of data transmission. Actually, there will be number one simplex mode and there will be duplex mode. So now let's study in deep about simplex mode. Simplex mode is the transmission of data and information that takes place only in one direction. It is a unidirectional mode of data transmission, radio, newspaper, television broadcasting, books, etc. are the examples of simplex mode of data transmission. So I want to give you some examples. Okay? Here it has told about radio. So uh, while reading the radio, uh, while you're listening to the radio, you can answer the question given to the radio. Like they will be uh, saying some words and you cannot answer or reply that word. In actually the simplex mode of data communication means the data is traveling from sender to receiver but receiver cannot reply the information that uh, sender has provided it to receiver. So that's what simplex mode of data transmission is. So now let's see what 
duplex mode beep sets. Duplex is the mode of data transmission in which the data and information flow in both directions. So this uh, flows in both directions. It is bidirectional mode of data transmission. There are two types of duplex mode as well. It's one half duplex and another will be full duplex. Half duplex is the mode of data and information uh, that flows in both directions but only one direction at a time. Walk talking and wireless handset are the example of half duplex mode. So in full duplex mode, data and information flow in both directions simultaneously on the transmission path. Mobile and landline phones are the examples of full duplex mode. So actually what half duplex and full duplex are? Half duplex means actually sender will send the data to the receiver in one time. Okay? In time one, sender will send the data to the receiver. And then when the time one ends, and then when the information has been transferred, then sender uh, means receiver gets the chance to reply to that means the it flows actually in both direction A can send to B and B can send to A but one at a time means A is sending to B at the same time B now can send the data to A that's half duplex examples are walkie talkie and uh, what full duplex is in full duplex mode the data and information flow in both directions simultaneously on the transmission path it means that a is sending to b and at the time while receiving while at the time while b is receiving the data b can also send the data to a means a is sending to b b is receiving the data and also b is sending the data to a so that was full duplex is so here i have given you a simple Diagram here you can see the workstation and workstation actually computer and they have been linked to the transmission path and this computer is providing data to this computer and uh, time first time it is uh, sending the data from here to here in the second time it, now the receiver is sending it to the sender that was half duplex and now let's see full duplex in the full duplex they are connected and workstation 1 is sending data to workstation 2 workstation 2 is receiving but also at the same time workstation 2 is sending the data to workstation 1 that's what uh, is direction of data all the time when simultaneously it is a pictorial representation so now let's head on towards communication media so what communication media is uh, actually, communication media is a path through which the data and information are transmitted between connected devices in a network environment. Uh, in a network environment, two devices will be connected with each other, and the path through which the data and information are transmitted between those devices is called communication media. And actually, communication media is also called transmission media. It acts as communication channel for connecting different devices. Actually, it can be either wired or wireless media. The two main types are guided communication media or unguided communication media. Guided communication media is also known as wired or bounded communication media and unguided is also known as wireless or unbounded communication media. So let's first learn about guided communication media. Here you go, guided communication media is the media which uses cable or wire to transfer data and information among computers. And this is a very easy, fast, and secure way to transfer data and information from one computer to another. Uh, the different types of wire or cable which are used for a computer network uh, are actually twisted pair wire, coaxial cable wire, fiber optic cable wire. There are actually a lot of wire, but I'm just covering the top three of the main three twisted pair, coaxial cable, and the fiber optic cable. So we will study about them now. So let's at first study about the twisted pair cable. Twisted pair wire is made up of copper and pair of wires are twisted together in insulated plastic. Actually, twisted pair wire actually is made up of copper and it is a pair of wire which are twisted together and it is actually insulated with plastic. So, it is commonly used in communication media, means transferring data between two connected devices in a network environment, and it is also widely used in landline telephone. And Connector, which is the most popular connector used in twisted pair wire, is RJ45 connectors. Okay, and the two types of twisted pair wire are unsolicited twisted pair and silver twisted pair UTP and STP. Let's start now. Learn about UTP cables. So, what are UTP cables? 
UTP also known as unsigned which to create cable or wire is the most popular wire and this is used to transfer data information in telephone connection the cable without a seal is called unsigned twisted pair I mean this cable is twisted but it is not sealed so it is an unsigned twisted pair simple okay it's great start from cat 1 to cat 7 actually it has ratings cat 1 rating to cat 7 and actually it's easy to see and can cover a distance of 100 meters the capacity of wire to transfer data from one computer to another computer is called bandwidth. This term is very important term. Uh, bandwidth it is actually the capacity of wire to transfer data from one computer to another computer. So, on the digital pair has low bandwidth, means it has low capacity, means capacity is very less uh, to transfer data from one computer to another computer and is measured in MPPS, which stands for megabits per second. So as we have already learned about UTP, now let's see about STP. STP also known as single twisted pair is a wire woven with a copper seal. Cabling is more difficult to install and more expensive than UTP. Its bandwidth is 10 to 500 Mbps, megabits per second, and as a 45 connector is used in STP, it provides better protection against electromagnetic interference with UTP. Actually, STP is twisted, but it has shielded protection uh, so that it provides better protection against EMI than UDP because UDP does not have seals to protect it from EMI. So that's about STP. So now we are going to learn about the coaxial cable. Coaxial cable is made up of copper or aluminum wire with an inner conductor surrounded by an insulating layer and again surrounded by conductor. So it consists of two conductors, inner and outer conductor. It has high bandwidth and noise immunity, so it is usually used in widely used in uh, long distance telephone lines. B and C and D connectors are the most popular connectors used in coaxial cables. You can see here in the diagram outside insulation, copper mesh, insulation, and copper wire. The, this copper wire is used to transmit the data and it has two, two layers actually, one conductor, inner conductor, and outer conductor, and then Insulation, outside insulation, and inside insulation, inner insulation. So now let's again now discuss about fiber optic cable, the new generation of cable. Okay, fiber optic cable is made up of plastic or glass fiber to transmit data. It uses light wave to carry data signal from one end of the cable to another end. So it is of high quality and transmit data signals at very high speed. It is more powerful than twisted pair cable and coaxial cable. So it is widely used cable, especially in ISP, which means internet service provider, and YST connector, which means straight tip connector, and SMA, which means screw mounted adapters, or SC, which means subscriber connector, etc. Are the common connectors used in the fiber optic cable. Fiber optic cable use glass threads or glass fiber. You can see here these are all about this glass fiber and plastic fibers and it is used to transmit data and it uses very very high speed to transmit the data so it is very fast and it transmits high quality data signal at very high speed so as we have learned about fiber optic cable now it's time to learn about unguided media we have learned about guided media where we have discussed about the twisted pair cables, coaxial cables, and the fiber optic cables. Now we turn to learn about the unguided media. Unguided communication media, which is the communication channel in which data and information are transferred between two devices without using wire or cable. Nowadays, wireless technology is used in communication technology, so it uses radio signal for receiving and transmitting electronic data. Some types of wireless communication are so the types which we are going to discuss are radio networking, infrared transmission, microwave transmission, satellite communication, Bluetooth technology, Wi-Fi technology, and Wi-Fi technology. So let's start with radio networking. So what radio networking is? Radio wave, which is an electronic magnetic wave. The data and information can be changed into audio signals using high frequency wave on the basis of frequency, amplitude, and phase modulation. The wave is modulated due to its frequency change, known as FM, frequency modulation. So the wave which is modulated due to its frequency change is known as FM, frequency modulation. And the wave which is modulated due to its amplitude change is known as amplitude modulation or AM. 
So the wave is modulated due to its phase change, known as PM, phase modulation, which is modulated due to its phase change, is known as phase modulation. So radio wave is a wave or pattern received after modulation of signal. So radio networking is totally based on radio wave. You can see here in the diagram, there will be one antenna transmitting devices with to the transmitter, it will be in the transmission line, it will transmit radio waves and there will be one receiver antenna which will receive the data and give it to the transmitter and then it will show in the digital format. So this is how it is in the world. So in the second thing we are going to learn about is microwave transmission. Microwave is also a high frequency wave which is used to transfer signal to atmosphere. So it is also called line of sight communication. So why it is called line of sight communication? Because it cannot bend or pass obstacles like hill or tall buildings. It always goes straight. So transmitting and receiving device should be in clear line of sight to get on high towers. Repeaters on hill to amplify signal for long distance communication in microwave. So what is this? You may not have understand this, but actually what happens is there will be one transmission line. Here input will be given to the transmitter to the sending transmission line and then it will sense the microwave waves or microwaves to the transmission line and then the receiver will receive it and then the transmission line to transmission line it will give you to the receiver and then it will provide you the desired output so in the between of the sender and receiver there must not be any kind of obstacles and if there are if the sender and receiver are far from each other and cover long distance then we should use repeater to strengthen and amplify the signals so digital modem and antenna are the important microwave devices some of the devices microwave devices are digital modem and so after learning of microwave transmission, now we are heading towards satellite communication. So satellite communication which is used to transfer information wirelessly worldwide after 1965. Actually it is an artificial satellite which is placed in outer space for the purpose of telecommunication or radio or television or internet or etc. So actually it is based on telecommunication so text photo video etc can be transferred worldwide using satellite communication it is like microwave relay station in the space or sky nowadays most of the country use their own satellite to communicate you can see here what happens is there will be a station in the earth uh, which will be uplink to the satellite and then it will provide all necessary information required for the satellite satellite will monitor the data signals where are they roaming and then it will provide it to the downlink which will be a second earth station and it will receive it and then provide us the digital output so this is about satellite communication after learning satellite communication we are now heading towards bluetooth technology so bluetooth we have heard this term a lot actually it is a wireless technology standard used for exchanging data between fixed and mobile devices over short distance using ultra high frequency radio waves uh, actually it is a open wireless technology standard for exchanging data over very short distances using uh, pans personal area network with high levels of security it was created actually by telecom vendor ericsson in 1994 bluetooth can connect up to eight devices simultaneously today bluetooth is management by the bluetooth special interest group bsig and bluetooth uh, ranges in the industrial scientific and medical radio bands from 2.402 gigahertz to 2.480 gigahertz and building personal area network so this is the uh, logo of Bluetooth and it is widely used actually but now it is now these uh, technology are declining because Wi-Fi technology and most more stronger technology are being developed so Bluetooth is now at its back so now we have to learn about Wi-Fi technology Wi-Fi we heard this word maybe every day it is universal and actually it is a universal wireless networking technology that utilizes radio frequency to transfer data. Wi-Fi allows high-speed internet connection without the use of cables. The term Wi-Fi is a contraction of wireless fidelity. So the full form of Wi-Fi actually is wireless fidelity and commonly is used to refer the term to wireless networking technology. So wireless fidelity means wireless networking technology. 
so y by works of the same principle is other wireless device means it uses radio frequency to send signals between devices so wi-fi is very much uh, used term nowadays because it is a connection which is established using a wireless adapter to create hotspot or areas in the vicinity of wireless router that are connected to the network and it allow users to access the internet services so that's about wi-fi now let's head on towards wimax technology our last topic for today is wimax technology wimax technology actually is a wireless broadband communication technology which is based around the IEEE 802.16 standard providing high speed data over a wide area means WiMAX covered wide area. And the letters of WiMAX stand for Worldwide Interoperability of Microwave Access or Access and it is a technology for point to multi point to wireless networks. So it is a technology for point to multi point wireless networking and it is a family of wireless broadband standard based on the IEEE 802.16 set of standards which provide multiple physical layer of media access control options. So WiMAX operates at higher speed and over greater distances and for a greater number of users. So WiMAX has the ability to provide service even in areas that are difficult for wired infrastructure to be and the ability to overcome the physical limitation of traditional wired infrastructure. So that is about WiMAX technology. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching. And if you like this video, don't forget to like, comment, and share. Goodbye. Have a nice day.